I am Mrs. Bowers and I am a Master Gardener with the Idaho University Extension Service. I am a Canyon County Master Gardener and I am on the Junior Master Gardener team. And today we are going to be doing Literature in the Garden and we will have this book we will be reading, The Gardener. Good day, my name is Mrs. Bowers and I am going to read a story to you in my garden, by the way. And the story that I'm going to read to you is called The Gardener. Isn't that appropriate? And it's written by Sarah Stewart and by David Small. And they're a married couple, by the way. And this book won an award. And I want you to notice this seal on the uh, front of the cover. That's a call to cut seal. And that means they won an award for this. And he won an award for the best illustrations. So we're going to notice that. And I want to tell you a little bit about call to cut. So call to cut is a really good award. They give a, a book award every year. And so when you see a Caldecott seal, that you know that it's going to be a good book. Or there's another one called Newberry. And that's a real, those are really good books too. So this is The Gardener. It is set in the Great Depression. And the Great Depression was a really hard time. And it was kind of like last year when we had the COVID. Um, so we're going to figure out what the Great Depression is when I read this story to you. And one thing I'm going to tell you, this one is set in 1935. And for the first page right here, you might see... Um, some different things here. It doesn't quite look like it does nowadays. I want you to notice the cars that they drive and grandma, what she's wearing and what the girl is wearing. Perhaps that's a little bit different too. So we're gonna think about what the Great Depression was when we're reading this. And when I'm reading this, I want you to notice the illustrations. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about colors and we're gonna talk about plants. So The Gardener by Sarah Stewart and David Small. I also want to mention that every one of the writings here on each page is a letter. And a letter is something that people used to write to each other. And maybe people still do. Some people still do. And they write a letter with pencil and paper or pen and paper. And they put it in an envelope and they send it um, through the mail. And you have to have an envelope and a postage stamp. And that's how they sent all their mail during the Great Depression in 1935. And you might have a great grandma that might be this old. And you should ask her about which, when she lived then. So this is the beginning of the story. August 27th, 1935. Dear Uncle Jim, Grandma told us after supper that you want me to come to the city and live with you until things get better. Did she tell you that Papa has been out of work for a long time and no one asked Mama to make dresses anymore? We all cried, even Papa. But then Mama made us laugh with her stories about your chasing her up trees when you were both little. Did you really do that? I'm small, but strong, and I'll help you all I can. However, Grandma said to finish my schoolwork before doing anything else. Your niece, Lydia Grace Finch. September 3rd, 1935. Dear Uncle Jim, I'm mailing this from the train station. I forgot to tell you in the last letter three important things that I'm too shy to say to your face. Number one. I know a lot about gardening, but nothing about baking. Number two, I'm anxious to learn to bake, but is there any place to plant seeds? Number three, I like to be called Lydia Grace, just like Grandma. Your niece, Lydia Grace Finch. On the train, September 4th, 1935. First of all, a train. Have you ever ridden in a train? Think about the train and what it might be like. Notice how it looks in the inside of a train. And I want you to notice what's happening here while I read you this letter. On the train, September 4th, 1935. Dear Mama, I feel so pretty in your dress that you made over for me. I hope you don't miss it too much. Dear Papa, I haven't forgotten what you said about recognizing Uncle Jim. Just look for Mama's face with a big nose and a mustache. I promise not to tell him. Does he have a sense of humor? And dearest grandma, thank you for the seeds. The train is rocking me to sleep and every time I doze off, I dream of gardens. Love to all, Lydia Grace. Oh, look where she ended up. September 5th, 1935. Dear mama, papa, and grandma, I'm so excited. There are window boxes here. They look as if they've been waiting for me. So now we'll both wait for spring. And grandma, the sun shines down on the corner where I live and work. Love to all, Lydia Grace. Uncle Jim doesn't smile. So let's see this, right? Here is a, a window box, and there is a window box, and there is a window box. 
and so they're empty. So it's the wrong season to plant something in those window boxes. December 25th, 1935. Ooh, that sounds like a familiar date. I wonder what that was. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I adore the seed catalogs you sent for Christmas. And Grandma, thank you for the bolts. I hope you receive my drawings. I wrote a long poem for Uncle Jim. He didn't smile, but I think he liked it. He read it aloud, then put it in his shirt pocket and patted it. Love to all, Lydia Grace. See the difference here? Notice their sink, their iron, their stove. A little bit different. Look at the light. February 12, 1936. Dearest Grandma, thank you again for those bulbs you sent at Christmas. You should see them now. I really like Ed and Emma Beach, Uncle Jim's friends who work here. When I first arrived, Emma told me she'd show me how to knead bread if I would teach her the Latin names of all the flowers I know. Now, just a half a year later, I'm kneading bread and she's speaking Latin. More good news, we have a store cat named Otis who at this very moment is sleeping at the foot of my bed. Love to all, Lydia Grace. Uncle Jim isn't smiling yet, but I'm hoping for a smile soon. So now look at they're in the bakery and you can see this is the bread mixer. Look at he's decorating a cake. I think that might be a butter churn, which is an old fashioned butter churn. So interesting things. March 5th, 1936. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I've discovered a secret place. You can't imagine how wonderful it is. No one else knows about it but Otis. I have great plans. Thank you for all the letters. I'll try to write more, but I'm really busy planting all your seeds in cracked teacups and bent cake pans. And Grandma, you should smell the good dirt I'm bringing home from the vacant lot down the street. Love to all, Lydia Grace. This, by the way, is a fire escape, and that's what old buildings used to have so that you could escape on the outside of the building. Look where she is. Where do you think she is? You'll have to think about that. Look at that picture closely. April 27th, 1936. Dearest Grandma, all the seeds and roots are sprouting. I can hear you saying, April showers bring May flowers. Emma and I are sprucing up the bakery, and I'm playing a great trick on Uncle Jim. He sees me reading my mail, planting seeds in the window boxes, going to school, doing my homework, sweeping the floor. But he never sees me working in my secret place. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I'm planning on a big smile from Uncle Jim in the near future. And notice this. This is a president. I want you to see if you can figure out who this is. He was a president during the Great Depression. And look how cheap that bread is. It's only five cents a loaf. May 27th, 1936. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, you should have heard Emma laugh today when I opened your letter and dirt fell out onto the sidewalk. Thank you for all the baby plants. They survived the trip in the big envelope. More about Emma. She's helping me with a secret place. Hooray! Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I saw Uncle Jim almost smile today. The store was full, well, almost full, of customers. Now look at those window boxes. She planted all the flowers in the window boxes. And look what happened when she opened her envelope. June 27th, 1936. Dear Grandma, flowers are blooming all over the place. I'm also growing radishes, onions, and three kinds of lettuce in the window boxes. Some neighbors have brought containers for me to fill the flowers and a few customers even gave me plants for the gardens this spring. They don't call me Lydia Grace anymore. They call me the gardener. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I'm sure Uncle Jim will smile soon. I'm almost ready to show him my secret place. July 4th, 1936. Dearest Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I am bursting with happiness. The entire city seems so beautiful especially this morning. The secret place is ready for Uncle Jim. At noon, the store will close for the holiday and then we'll bring him up to the roof. I've tried to remember everything you ever taught me about beauty. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I can already imagine Uncle Jim's smile. Oh, look at she said holiday and notice the date, July 4th. What holiday is that? Oh my goodness, look at her secret place. Is that the rooftop that she found? So that's a rooftop and look what she did to it. Do you think he's happy? 
Is he amazed? What's going on here? Is he surprised? And do you notice this is the 4th of July and look what they have in their hands. July 11th, 1936. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, my heart is pounding so hard I'm sure the customers can hear it downstairs. At lunch today, Uncle Jim put the close sign on the door and told Ed and Emma and me to go upstairs and wait. He appeared with the most amazing cake I've ever seen, covered with flowers. I truly believe that cake equals 1,000 smiles. And then he took your letter out of his pocket with the news of Papa's job. I'm coming home. Love to all and see you soon. Lydia Grace. P.S. Grandma, I've given all my plants to Emma. I can't wait to help you in your garden again. We gardeners never retire. And look at their rack at the train station and he gave her a hug. The end. And look at there she is with grandma again. Okay, did you understand anything about the Great Depression from this book? That it was really hard. Her mom and her dad both lost their jobs, so they were very poor. And she had to go live in the city with her uncle because probably everybody else had to go and look for work. And then when they did find jobs, they came and got um, sent for her again. So that's why she had to go to the city and um, during the Great Depression. So the Great Depression, um, a lot of times it was very similar to what we had last year during COVID. Remember when we couldn't find toilet paper at the stores? Well, that's what happened in the Great Depression. A lot of people didn't have a lot of things and some people lost their home and some people were really poor, but we eventually got out of it. So uh, we don't have the Great Depression anymore. That happened between 1929 and about 1941 is when we had the Great Depression. So if you have anybody that was living at that time, you should talk to them and ask them about it and get the first hand report about it, which is called Primary Source. So this is the book that we are reading and now we're gonna talk about a few things about the book. Remember I told you that we're gonna talk about the illustrations of the book that won a, an award? And one thing we're gonna talk about is the color wheel today. And you might have learned this in school, but here is the color wheel and there's three different kinds of color schemes that are used in designing flower beds. Uh, one of them is called analogous, the other is monochromatic, and the next one is complementary, and we'll be talking about those. Okay, remember how I told you we're going to talk about the illustrations of the book? We're going to talk about colors. So I want to show you this page, and this is a page that represents monochromatic. It's really very much the same color, but in different shades. And I'm standing here in my flower bed, and I want you to notice that it's monochromatic. So what we have here is we mostly just have greens with a little bit of white. And so this is a monochromatic um, color scheme in the flower bed. The next color scheme we're talking about is complementary. So they are different, um, they're opposite of the color wheel. And so we'll show you a picture of the color wheel and you can see that these will be on the opposite side. So the blues will be opposite of the yellow and the orange would be opposite of the blue and um, this is what a complementary color scheme is. And does this remind you of Boise State? Blue and orange. The next color scheme is called analogous. And these are colors that are closely related. So remember, you have red, which is a primary color. But if you mix with yellow, which is another primary color, guess what color you get? You get orange. So these, all these represent analogous color scheme. Remember how Lydia Gray said that her um, uncle gave her cracked teacups and bent cake pans to put her flowers in or her plants in. And so here's an example of what I have done. I have a teapot. I don't have a teacup, but I have a teapot. And I've put a plant in that. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about is when you're putting plants in containers, you want to make sure that the container drains. So if the container doesn't drain, you might want to get a small little pot that could even, it doesn't have to be very beautiful, and you can put it inside of that. So you can use almost anything for a pot for a plant as long as it drains because otherwise the plant will um, drown. So this is what I do. I just make it look like it's planted and it's in a nursery pot. These are called nursery pots. And I just stick it in there and this is actually on a shelf pretty high and you can't even see it. But that's what I do. And then if I get ready to transplant this, I would want to just get a pot that's about an inch bigger and put it in that. You don't want to have too big of a pot for uh, potted plants because then they have a problem. 
so they don't grow as well unless they just are a little bit bigger and then you just keep bringing the sizes up so that's what i do for my this is my teapot instead of a bent uh cake pan and a teacup a, cr a cracked teacup okay another thing i'd like to talk to you about with plants is how to increase your plant supply which you never have enough plants so one way you can do that is to propagate them and propagate means take what you have and make more of more plants and one way i've done this these are pagonias and i have several in here different kinds and what I've done is I've taken the top off of the pogonia, which was actually too tall for the pot it was in. And I have cut it off. And you can see there's a loop, there's a root starting to grow on that one right there. So let me show you, this one is probably better. So I have a really long stem. I've cut all the leaves off. And then I've stuck them in water and making sure there's a lot of stem in that water. And then you just wait and see what happens and, um, little root hairs will come out and roots will start to grow and when you get quite a few of them on there and i'm sorry i don't have any that have roots on them right now but if you get quite a few of them on there then you can take a pot fill it up with potting soil make sure you use potting soil uh, water it really good for about a week like keep it wet and then you've got a new plant other things that might be on the website for you to do are and you might want to print these up is to figure out if you wanted to grow a vegetable garden is it cheaper to grow the vegetables yourself or to buy them in the store? So what you have is a worksheet here that you can print up and you can try to figure out um, if you want to do that. There's all, this is a tomato uh, worksheet and there's one just for any vegetable that you might want to use. Now, just remember it's more fun to grow your tomatoes and they taste better than they do in the store. So they're more fun, you might want to grow them anyway. So if there's any questions, you can email the library and they will um, get in touch with me and I'll answer your questions. Thank you.